Hello there, this is Dimitris Christou and we're about to see another nice Blender video tutorial about building a cool animation and this time around we'll be using a scene someone else built and this scene is downloaded by BlendSwap from BlendSwap actually and this is a 2.49 file by uh, Kuhn 0362 and it's a nice engine animation and what I want to tell uh, to you guys with this tutorial is that there are some times that you need to create something fast for a client or something and it's good for the Blender users to have BlendSwap and you can find lots of uh, uh, ready-made or models and clips and animation actually like this one that you can use for your uh, clients or your personal work and as you can see this one is a <coughs> excuse me creative commons zero file but of course we're crediting uh, Kuhn here he's made a lovely job and if you check out some of his other files you'll see that this guy is pretty awesome at at least modeling. Okay, so moving on to Blender, we have this file, and first thing we'll do is try to tidy up the interface to work better. I'll move over to the um, to the uh, setup options for the user interface and click the third one, the material one, and I think this one looks slightly better. I'm going to click and drag to connect the 3D viewports. And I'll hit 0 for the camera perspective uh, view. And I'll hit the Z key also for the solid view. And we're having the engine here built by a uh, Kuchen. And what I'll do is select text and delete it. And first thing I'll do, let's bring this one up, flip to top, right mouse button click and then uh, select flip to top. And first thing I'll do, as I said before, is modify the materials. We have this material here, the material.003 for this piston here. And what we'll do for this one is move over to the textures and delete them both. Select and hit the X here. Okay. Now back to the material, we don't have the textures anymore. I'll change the diffuse color, make it a white one, a white color. And I'll uncheck ramp and bring the specular density down to zero. Okay. We also have this material here, the material.001. Let's move over to the textures and let's delete them both for this material as well. And back to the material, the diffuse color is set to uh, almost white. Okay. I'll uncheck ramp and bring the specular density down to zero. And what I'll do is also add material for the uh, spark plugs things here. And they don't currently have any material, so I'll give, uh, let's set the material.003 for them. Select, click here, and select material.003 for this one. Click material.003 for this one, and last but not least, we've got this one. And this will also use material.003. And you can see by the 50 number here that this material has 15 users, 15 objects that use this material. What I'll also do for the scene here is to select the lamps. I'm right clicking to select them and we have the uh, lamp options, the lamp tab here. And what I'll do for my lamp is click no shadow and I don't want any shadows to appear in my scene. You'll see why in a while. And select this spot as well and click no shadow for this one. All right. Now I'll move over to the world options, click this little icon for the world options. And I'll change the horizon color and make it black. Okay. And what I'll also do is click environment lightning and set the energy to 0 0.9 and we'll leave it to white, which is the default. Now another thing I'll do is move over to the render options. And first thing is move over to post processing. And I'm doing this now because we will add some uh, compositing nodes later on. So I'm taking compositing. 
and what I'll also do is change the dimensions to set it to HDTV 720 progressive and now we're getting a different frame for the camera and let's uh, click the right mouse button over this frame to select the camera and move over to the camera options I think I'll change the focal length, I'll bring it down from 35, let's bring it down 32 and I think we're good at about there, I'll move over to the transform objects to the, uh, to the object options and we have the transform, the location, the rotation and the scale for the camera let's change those a bit, I'm setting the y value to minus 16 and I'll set the X rotation to 80 and then move my camera down and I think we're good at about there, let's set the Z to 7.5 and let's move our camera perhaps not this way, let's set the X to 9 OK, and I'll set the Y rotation, let's set it to 5 and the Z rotation, let's set it to 40 or perhaps, yeah, 42, 41, OK and I'll change the X rotation, let's set it to OK, and let's set it to 84, OK and what I actually want here is to have a nice little frame with the engine in place and another thing I want to see at the render layers is that by default here our scene use sampled motion blur which means that it renders a frame and it renders the frame five times and then it applies a motion blur effect to it I'll just bring this one from five down to three and I'm doing this because I want my scene to be rendered faster and I got another thing I really don't like here and you can see the connection here between this cog and the and the shaft, I don't know how this one is called I'll hit the tab key and try to locate a specific vertex here, let's take a good look I'm hitting the Z key for the wireframe mode OK, selected the vertex and hit X and select delete the vertices. OK. Now I'll hit 0, Tab and Z to take a look through the camera perspective view. And I think we're good. I'll just bring the Z for the camera here down a bit. And perhaps change the focal length. Let's bring this one down to 31. OK and now I think it's time to render an image and you can see that the, of course the model is pretty nice and it demonstrates the uh, uh, the motion of a, of a four cylinder engine so this one looks pretty nice and time to spice it up a bit by using compositing nodes I'm splitting my field view and changing the top part, let's change this one to a node editor and I'm hitting the N key to make the properties here hide and we'll move over to the compositing nodes and click use nodes and we do have render layers let's move this one to the left and the composite, let's move this one to the right and I'll also add another output, output. I'll hit shift A and add output, let's add a viewer and we need the viewer to be able to check what's going on I'll also click backdrop and click and drag to connect the render layers to the viewer so that the render appears at the uh, back of the compositing nodes OK now first thing I'll add for my scene here, for my uh, engine is a filter, I click hit shift A and move over to add filter and let's add a filter and by default it's set to soften what I'll do is click and drag it to connect the to place it at the middle of the render layers and the viewer and the uh, soften now affects the the scene 
And what I'll do for this one is change it from uh, soft one to so bell. And I'll also bring the factor down. Let's bring it down to 0 0.7. Okay. And what I'm doing here is uh, applying the Sobel filter because I want to have the edges of the of the object here appearing pretty clear for the scene. Now what I'll also do is, uh, and you can see that we're having some strange lines here. You might like them or you might not. I feel I don't like them being here, there. And what I'll do for this one is increase the uh, gather samples for the ray trace solution and bring those up from 5, let's set them up to let's set them up to 7 and render again and of course if you want the compositing uh, to be to appear on your render you should also take the output of the final uh, compositing node and make it an input of the composite so let's render again now that we have increased the samples for the environment lightning and it renders one frame then this is the second frame and now it will render the third one okay looking slightly better we will also fix this using the compositing and what I'll do now is hit shift A and add color and invert node and again clicking and dragging and placing this in the middle of the show bill and the viewer and you can see how the invert here uh, uh, affects the image and I think it looks pretty nice and what I'll do now is hit shift A and add color a mix node okay so what we want here is to actually mix the result of the Sobel and invert to a render layer to uh, the actual rendered image and what we're having here, you see I've switched the, uh, the image inputs. I want the result of the Sobel and invert to be down and the render layer's output to be up. And I'll just change the factor here, let's set it down to 0 0.7. Okay. And I think mixing the actual uh, render to the, to the line uh, effect gives a nice bright result for my uh, compositing here so I'll keep it that way and what I'll do now is uh, hit shift A to add a very potent uh, node for this setup and this is a color ramp and again click and drag and place it at the middle of the mix and the viewer node and what the color ramp will do now is help us affect the colors for the for the image we have the black color on the left and the white color on the right and what you can do now is select the white color and then click here and you can now change it and add some nice color for the for the scene and what you can also do is also change the black one. Let's change this one slightly, just a bit. We want it to be to still be dark, but we can change the color to a dark blue color instead of a total black color. Okay. And what you can also do is move the colors and affect the the image okay you can fiddle with this one and uh, just by changing the colors and the ram here it'll give you totally different results you should experiment with this one until you find something you like and what I'll also do as I'll, I'll move on is hit shift 8 and I'll add filter I'll add let's add the blur and again click and drag connect it and let's move our staff around okay color ramp the blur and I'll change the blur here from Gaussian to fast Gaussian and I'll add some fast Gaussian uh, blur on the x-axis set it to 1 and I'm just adding a slight 
amount of blur for my scene and what I'll do now is hit shift A to add let's add color and an RGB curves and the RGB curves here can help you further uh, affect the color for the for the render for the image and let's see what we can do with it I want to make my uh, render here brighter and I also want to uh, darker some parts of the image and I think it looks pretty nice as it is and I'll also want to bring the blue let's bring this one down or bring this one up okay at about here and as I said before you can fill with these options a lot until you find a result you really like so that's what the RGB curves here does. It helps us for, uh, further fine tune the colors for the image. And time to add yet another compositing node. I'll hit Shift A and add distort. Let's add a lens distortion effect. And again, bring this one here to connect it to put it right in the middle of the RGB curves and the viewer node and let's move this one up and what I'll do for the lens distortion node here is click projector and then increase the dispersion value let's set it up to 0 0.2 and you can see how this uh, affects the scene I pretty, pretty like uh, how this node affects the scene I like the effect but what we'll do here is add another lens distortion and I'll hit shift D to duplicate this node and position this one as well and for the second lens distortion node I'll uncheck projector and bring the dispersion value here down to 0 0.1 and what you can also do for the distort here I'll hit control up to uh, full screen my compositing nodes and what you can also do for this uh, render here is bring the distort for the lens distortion here to a negative value and this slightly looks like it punches the image and you can see how the sides are pulled inwards and I think this one looks pretty nice for our uh, tune like render okay so these are the compositing nodes we've used to turn this image into this one and you can see we've tweaked our final render a lot and of course in order for the render to appear we have to take the output for from the final compositing node and make it an input for the composite node and now if you click render and so hide render view will be seeing the uh, actual image the actual render image affected by the compositing nodes so I'm hitting escape this is it this is what I wanted you guys to see and of course this is an animated file and you can render an animation out of it you can see that the pistons here move up and down and everything works pretty nice so this is our scene I'll be rendering some clips for you to see and feel free to fiddle with the settings here to get the colors and the look you want for your scene. This is Dimitrius Christou and thanks for watching.